morning everyone uh, i'm very happy to be for god uh, who gave us this precious time uh, to share the heart of god and also uh, god has given us a great time uh, to uh, remember the heart of god also today uh, we want to see the heart of god let us open the bible uh, second Samuel chapter 24. Uh, second Samuel chapter 24, verse 9. 2 Samuel chapter 24, verse 9. Then Joab gave the sum of the number of the people to the king. And there were in Israel 800,000 violent men who drew a sword, and the men of Judah were 500,000 men. And David's heart condemned him after he had numbered the peoples. So David said to the Lord, I have sinned greatly in what I have done. <clears throat> But now I pray, O oh Lord, take away the iniquity of your servants, for I have done very foolishly. Now when David arose in the morning, the word of the Lord came to the prophet God, David seer, saying, Go and tell David, Thus says the Lord, I offer you three things, choose one of them for yourself that I, might, I may do it to you. So God came to David and told him, he said to him, shall seven years of famine come to you in your land, or shall you flee three months before your enemies while they purge you, or shall there be three days plague in your land? Now consider and see what I what answer I should take back to him who sent me. David say to God, I am in great distress. Please let us fall into the hand of the Lord. For his mercies are great, but do not let me fall in the hand of man. So the Lord sent a plague upon Israel from the morning till the appointed time, from Dan to Beersheba, 7,000 men of the people died. And when the, when the angel stretched out his hand over Jerusalem to destroy it, the Lord relented from the destructions and said to the angel who was destroying the peoples, it is enough. Now restrain your hand. And the angel of the Lord was by threatening flow of Arwana, the Jebusite. Then David spoke to the Lord when he saw the, the angel who was uh, strengthening the peoples and said, Surely I have seen and I have done wickedly, but these sheep, what, I, what have they done? Let your hand, I pray, be against me and against my father's house. Verse 25. And they be built there an altar to the Lord and offer burnt offering and peace offering. So the Lord heed the prayer for the land and the plague was withdrawn from Israel. Yeah, uh, thank you. Uh, I'm very happy also before God uh, who share, who give us, uh, who give us time to share the heart of God together uh, with our brothers and sisters and also pastors. Uh, when I think, uh, because really when, while we are studying this first Samuel and second Samuel, really it was so blessed in, in my heart and actually uh, each and every chapter I have been uh, writing my note and the while we are having the Bible study the 
the heart which God has given me, I was able to uh, write down and meditate. And also I was able to see uh, the heart of God which is flowing this book of Samuel. Especially while I was reading uh, this Bible, uh, really I was touched through the life of David. Really we are able to see how David was able to uh, be a king. Actually, before he become a king, how God chose him and how God defeated, how David defeated Goliath and how he was survived from the uh, King Saul. And really, we could see that there was so many challenges and problems in his life. But really, we can see how uh, he was able to rely on God. And really, that face, that life, actually, that principle in his uh, spiritual life, really, it touched my heart. And it showed me how I, show me how I have to stand before God. And I, how I have to live and believe in God because really we are able to see really he was able to live not before man and he was able to be live before God yes of course not only he lived a perfect life he made many mistakes even today this is the one of the mistake what he made before the Lord yes though he committed sin though he uh, he made a mistake but today, what I was able to see, for us, we want to receive the grace and we want to receive the bless uh, without committing sin, right? Because we do, no one wants to make a sin, no one make a mistake and problem. And we want to live a perfect life. But really, we can see that we are not the one who is perfect. Really, we find ourselves, we made many mistakes, even we commit sin. Is it right? Uh, but really we can see that we could remember uh, that sin, though Satan condemn us through the mistake, through the sin what I made, condemn that you are the one who did it. And that time automatically in our heart, we want to hide what I have done. Uh, brother, really we can see that um, though Satan always condemning through with our mistake and our sin, but really we can see that also God, He is on who knows everything, and also God, He is on who allowed. Is it right? Who allowed? And now this chapter twenty four. Yes, I was talking about David. Yes, also he made a mistake. Yes, David also he committed sin. But really, God, he is the one who allowed him to do it so that God show him how uh, God show him how David is able before God and continually he was able to surrender before God. And I think uh, commit sin, yes, this is, looks bad. And also we try to not commit sin. But when I see what is most important after we have a sin, how is the, uh, how, how David he solved this issue and also how he was able to pass this problem. Is that right? I think that is one of the most, most important in our right. If you read this, uh, if you read this, uh, um, this Bible, uh, Second Samuel chapter, uh, chapter chapter 24 verse 1 again the angel of the Lord was arose against Israel he moved David against them to say go number Israel and Judah so if you look at it here it looks like uh, God he is the one who pushed David to commit sin because he was angry with Israel but if you see Mm, if you see that that Bible, uh, First Chronicle chapter twenty one, First Chronicle chapter twenty one, Chronicle chapter twenty one, because you you know as you know that Book of Samuel and also is connected with the uh, Chronicle, uh, 
first uh, Chronicles chapter 21. If you read verse one, now Satan stood up against Israel and moved David to number Israel. So uh, you are able to see that uh, in uh, second Samuel chapter 24, say that, that God he is the one who moved the heart of David uh, to to number Israel, but also this first chronicle, chapter 21, verse 1 says, Now Satan stood up against Israel and moved David to number Israel. So you're able to see that, uh, according to my opinion, and really we can see that, uh, though I do not know exactly, but uh, important is, is uh, Satan, yes, yeah, Satan, he arose and against uh, David. But God knows everything, yet God knows what he's doing, but it means that God allowed David to do it. Is it right? So actually, Satan he is on who, are, who arose and moved the David to, to again is to number the Israel, actually, which is a sin. But really, we can see that God knows, but uh, God just allowed him to, to leave him. Is it right? And also you remember when Cain killed Abel, also God knew it. When they no, when Peter denied Jesus Christ, also God knew it. Is that right? But through this, also they are able to realize their sin and they are able to repent and to surrender to God. So for me, I was able to see uh, really Satan moved the heart of David, right? Because really he moved the heart of David to number the Israel. Uh, uh, yes, to move the heart of David, but really we can see that God, he is on, who knew it, and also he allowed him. And because really, also there is something which God wants to teach David, and also God wants to teach Israel. Amen. Or uh, to number, the, like, why numbering is so evil before God? Uh, surely, if we think, uh, really, we are able to see that even yesterday we studied about the three, first the three might men of David and second three might men of David. Yes, though they are the greatest uh, the general in Israel, but really we can see that not because of also their might and their strong, really God he is on who gave the victory to Israel. Is it right? Even David get uh, so many victory in several war in whole his life. Also, we cannot say that David, he is a mighty. Actually, he received the grace from God 100%. Amen? Yes, it is true. Then what is evil before God? Because all things, what they have done, it is a grace of God. Amen? It is a grace of God, 100% grace of God and works of God. But if we count, it means that really in the heart of David, through this counting, he was able to see what he has done, right? So really, it heart, it was so evil before God. Also, oh, I was able to see yesterday while we are sharing is also this word of God. Really, I can see that... Oh, Without servant of God, how we are able to do this great work in Uganda? Without church, how I'm able to work in Uganda? Everyone know, oh, because I meet many Mahanaim pastors, because I have been, we have been training many Mahanaim pastors. Actually, they are coming to our church and they are learning. And then while they are learning certificate course and diploma course, and really, I can see that they are very happy with the gospel, what they receive. Also, in my heart, I'm so happy. They receive salvation. They're very happy. But after finishing their certificate and after finishing their diploma course, actually, after they got certificate, but I found that they have become far. Yes, some of them, because that certificate was their purpose not just really purely listen to the word of God, because really though they say they receive salvation, though they get a certificate, but if they, they know that this is a true gospel, if really they feel that they need to listen to this word of God, they would come continue, is it right? 
But I do not know, but though they are very happy with the word of God, but they don't come continue and connecting with the, us and having the fellowship continue. Really, I do not know what they are teaching. <clears throat> because really, without receiving the heart, how we are able to deliver. Just I re realize my own things and I just teach others. So really, it was somehow pain in my heart. And then also some cases, though they are close with us, uh, but when they see, I don't know how do you call it, kind of systems in Good News Mission. And they feel that, oh, if I continue to be with, with the Good News Mission, I might be difficult. And then I want to make some distance from Good News Mission, and then they just leave. That's why just we are connected with formality and then there's no flowing heart together and there is no connecting too much and they just live like this. So really in my heart, even though they finish the certificate course, even though they finish the diploma course, really I want to continue to have this fellowship because really even me, every day, every day, I, I, I have a fellowship and connecting my heart with the church because without connection, really I cannot do anything. So when I see these people, oh, really, <clears throat> when they connect, but really after some time, they want to make a distance and they want to go their own way. So one day I have a talk with one of those pastors and then I know that well, they have their own church and they have their own uh, ministry. Oh, but really, even though I don't know exactly their heart, but one thing which is difficult, everyone, do you want to have your own business or you want to have, you want to work someone? Yes, working for under the someone is really difficult. Really, it is not easy. Because really in our mission, we have denying our heart, even breaking our thought. Because really, I received so many orders from the church, so many guidance from the church. You know, with my heart, it is very hard to follow. It is very hard to listen with my own thought, with my own heart. You know, last two weeks ago, we received the congregatory message from president. It was very hard, but it was grace of God. But just the Korea church called me that, pastor called me that. Yo, if you send only this speech, there is no, no value. At least one of ministers should read behalf of president. The problem is I'm not PPS and how can I command any ministers to read? And also ministers also, it is very hard to read a speech of the president without directive. Is it right? Because according to my experience in Uganda for 12 years, it was nonsense. But church asked me in that way. Really in my heart, it was impossible, but I, what I learned from the church, first break my thought and follow. That is the, what I learned. So amazing thing is I really, I didn't have no way. I tried, but I didn't have a way, but I was, I called one of the ministers and really he was, he understand all the situation. He said that, let me call the, the secretary office of the state house. Let me check whether it is, is it okay to read behalf of present? And I will read for you. And after three hours, finally, we record. He read for us and we record the video. And really, I was surprised. Once again, God teach me. Everyone, really, with my own heart, do, do you think that you can maintain your spiritual life well? Yes, if you have your own life without servant of God in your life, without church in your life, Yes, you can read the Bible, you can, you can pray before God, you can realize your own things before God, yes, but it is very hard to break your flesh mind, break your thought, and be going beyond your limit. You cannot do it within your own heart, is it right? You cannot do it within your own heart. So when I'm under the church, when I'm under the servant of God, really always I have to break my heart. I have to break my desire. I have to break my flesh mind. And I just do it without my thought. But really from that point, I was able to see how God is working. So my point is, uh, when I was talking with the pastors, he says, I say to him, 
you know what, even though I'm a pastor of the Good News Mission, even though I'm a senior pastor, looks like I'm a head of Uganda church, looks like I'm a senior pastor, I'm a chairman of Good News Mission and chairman of IYF, but I know who I am, I'm nothing. Why? I'm not servant of God, I'm a servant of servant of God. Amen. And I know I'm not doing my own ministry, I'm doing the ministry of a servant of God. In Uganda, even though I'm ahead, but I'm not on who is the owner. I'm not on who is the decision makers. I'm just serving the servant of God and I'm part of his ministry. This is not my ministry. This is his ministry. Of course, I know that his ministry is not his own ministry. Also for him, his ministry is for ministry of God. But for me, I'm doing for not my ministry. I'm doing for his ministry. Amazing things, brethren. When I do this work of God in Uganda, you check all the work of God in Uganda. Those all the great work, how, how we meet the president six times, how we do the MOU with so many ministers, how we are able to work with Pastor Kayanja, Pastor Serwada, Bishop Joseph Rere, how we do we preach the word of God in Nambule. Everyone, if you check, Every fruit in work of gospel in Uganda. Is there anything which I do with myself? No. You can see that always that beginning point, and even in that moment, there was servant of God, right or not? Can I do the world camp alone? Can I do those such kind of big world camp in Makere University alone? If you see that whenever we have a world camp, who is there? There is a pastor is coming, brother from Kenya is coming. And pastors from Korea is coming, Grasha Sukhaya is coming, servant of God is coming. If you check everything, all the fruit in Uganda, there is not which I did. Though I'm here as a head, though it looks like I'm moving, 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 but from the beginning point, at the important point, each and every point, always there was a church and always there was a servant of God. Amen. Really, you can see that all the work there is nothing which I can do alone. When I'm connecting with the church, when I have a, my church, when I have a servant of God, really from that connection, we are able to do the great work of God in Uganda. Many people, they do not know. Looks like our church, Good News Mission Uganda, it looks small. Why? Oh, Good News Mission in Uganda, you have been here for 20 years. I do not know if our church is like Pastor Kayanja. If our church is like uh, Victory Church. Then what about those brothers who abuse our church, who despise our church? Can they do it like that? No, they cannot do it. But why easily, easily complain to the church? Why easily, easily judging the church and judging the servant of God? And why they despise our church? Yes, when they look at our church, it looks like small, looks like miserable. But for me, I believe that God will do great work of God in his time. This is for me, really, I believe when I was connected with church, really, God is working greatly. If you see, brethren, if you see the soccer play, how many people is on the ground? There are 20, is it 22? Even judge is there, but camera is going where? Camera is going where? The people who is handsome? The people who has good skill? No, camera angle is following where is the ball? Is it right? The, the player who has a ball, camera is following that player who has a ball. Camera is not shooting the person who has no ball. Is it right? For me, I believe in this generation, God has chosen the servant of God. And through him, God is walking. I'm not the one which God has chosen. God has chosen the servant of God. And for me, I'm assisting him. I'm working for him. And when I'm connected with him, really I can see the work of God even in my life and even in Uganda. The reason why I'm saying like this, David has been, he, he counted all the Judah and Israel. It was very evil because it was 100% by the works of God. What about even in my heart, if I count what happened in 2012, 2013? Wow, it was great work. It was a miracle. And if I feel that, wow, I have done something. Wow, how many times we meet present. 
How many times we did like this? How many times we pass a park came to Uganda? How many times what we did, what we did? If really is counting, not in really before the pure way, but really it was counting what I have done for God. The time I count, just remember and hold in my heart, really it became curse. Why? 100% it is work of God. So why it was so evil before God for counting number of the people? Really, he was able to see uh, Second Samuel chapter 24, verse, verse 9. The Joab gave the sum of the number of the people to the king. There was in Israel 800,000 variant men who drew the sword. And men of Judah were 500,000 men. It was great numbers, right? Verse 10, David's heart condemned him after he had numbered the people. So David said to the Lord, I have sinned greatly in what I have done. But now I pray, O Lord, take away the iniquity of your servant. I have done very foolish. Because David knew. David knew that what he has done, really it was able to count number. It was not his numbers. It was number of God. It was not his people. It was a people of God. I mean, God, he is and who raised those soldiers, the men of people, the men of God. It was by God, but not his. But he was counting his own way. And the number of chapters 11 says that when David arose in the morning, the word of the Lord came to the prophet God, David, he saying, and actually God gave him, God called God and say to him that go to the David, and because he gives three options, I offer three things, right? What is the first? Share seven years in famine of famine. So seven years of famine come to you. The first option was like, first offer was seven years of famine, right? And second offer is flee three months before your enemies, right? First is seven years of famine. And second is uh, you free from uh, from three three months before your enemy, and last is the um, three days break in your land, right? So this is a three offer. Everyone, what about if you you God gave you this option? Eh? If if God gave you this option, what are you going to select? You know what are you going to select? Eh? Frankly speaking, really I can see we are using our brain. When I, when I speak, in which one is better? First offer is better. Second offer is better. Third offer is better. So we check about how we can pass easy way. Anyway, that is really our human heart. But I was surprised what David said, verse 14. David said to God, I am in greatly distressed. Distress. Please let us fall into the hand of the Lord. For his mercies are great, but do not let me fall into the hand of man. Everyone, this word of God was so touched in my heart. Please let us, let us fall into the hand of man. Do not let me fall into the hand of man. Amen. Everyone like, for example, if you are in famine, if you are in famine, uh, is there a solution? Because though in the land of Israel, if there is a famine, you are able to be helped from other neighboring country, right? Supplying the food, isn't it? Is it right? You can be helped from others. What about if you are enemy also, you can, you can fight and also you can, you can call the neighbors to, to fight together. Yes, like famine and enemies, it can be solved by man and health of man. But what about uh, flag, flag? This flag is out of our hand. Who can solve this issue? Only God, amen? Why? Because he says, Let me let us fall into the hand of Lord, for his mercies are great, but do not let me fall, fall 
into the hand of man. Really, I was so thankful before God. Uh, really, David, even this time, when he has a mistake, mm. he didn't, he just received before God and he really, he repent before God. Amen. If God kill me, I would kill. If God save me, I would save. Really, this time I was able to see many times for us, easily, easily we rely on the humans. Is it right? And also, we, whenever we have a problem, we try to solve the issue with my own solutions. But really, we can see that David, he said it is better to fall into the hand of the Lord, not hand of man. Isn't it? Really, I can see it was um, really I can see though I say I teach faith, though I say I have a faith before God. But sometimes really I can see that I'm not the one who has a face. I'm the one easily looking at the human way. But really we can see that David, he really rely on God 100%. If God allowed me to die, really I have to die. If God saved me, I would save. I can see that really servant of God, Pastor Park, really I can see in his life also, he was living in this way. Amen. And really the time, also, we are able to see, really, this David, he repented before God, verse 17. Then David spoke to the Lord when he saw the angel, the angel who was striking the people and said, surely I have sinned and I have done wickedly, but this ship shall have the dying. And let your hand, I pray, be against me and against my father's house. Verse 25, David, be you there an altar to the Lord and offer burnt offering and peace offering so that the Lord heed the prayer for the land. The flag was withdrawn from Israel. Really, he didn't try to solve the problem by himself. He put everything at the hand of God and also really he confessed really his sin and repented before God and God has withdrawn his punishment from him. Uh, really, brothers and sisters, through this life of David, uh, really we are able to see, yes, yes, we can make a sin, we can make a mistake. So most important thing is uh, the time, how we are able to come up from there. Because when God revealed David's sin, the time David surrendered to God completely. He doesn't try to use the, he doesn't try to use his human's way, and God saw the issue. Hallelujah. Did you see the movie where someone make a mistake and then in the beginning it started with a small mistake, isn't it? But when it's revealed, did you see in the film, they try to hide this small problem, isn't it? Then you find it, it become more big problem, big problem and big problem. Finally, they destroyed completely. Is it right? But David, really, when God revealed his sin, really, he surrendered to God. He put everything in the hand of God. Everyone, whatever you do, even in your ministry, even in your spiritual life, even in your business, whatever you do, also, this is a basic um, spiritual heart which we should stand before God. Amen? Amen? Uh, really, we are able to see through this chapter 24 what was the sin of David. And also we are able to see when he had a sin and God revealed his sin, also how he was able to serve before God and then repent before God. Amen? Yeah, thank you so much.